In this video, we will go over how to measure your valve clearances and replace shims on a Triumph Bonneville motorcycle. The measurements need to be taken on a cold engine, so best to leave it overnight. Start by shifting the bike into its highest gear and then putting the bike on its center stand so that you can rotate the rear tire to position the cam lobes correctly. The next step is to remove the seat and fuel tank. To remove the tank, you can unclip the electrical connection and then remove the fuel pump hose by pushing the orange clip back and pressing the two buttons on the side while pulling the hose off. There is one more hose on the right side of the tank that slides off easily. The next step is to remove the spark plugs. I recommend blowing compressed air into the spark plug area to remove any debris. Then use an 18 millimeter thin walled socket to loosen the spark plug. It can be removed carefully with an adjustable wrench. In order to access the valve cover, you will need to remove a few components and brackets from the frame. The bracket on the left side of the frame requires a T25 hex wrench, and the bracket on the right side can be removed with an 8mm socket. And the metal housing can be removed with an 8mm socket as well. The valve cover bolts can be removed with a T27 hex wrench, but note that these bolts need to be returned to the same location since the bolts and the threads share a wear pattern. The last step is to remove the valve cover by gently tapping it loose and pulling it off. To measure the valve clearances, rotate the rear wheel so that the cam lobes are facing up and in. You'll need a set of feeler gauges to measure the clearances. For the Triumph Bonneville SC 2012, the intake clearances need to be within 0.15 millimeters and 0.2 millimeters, while the exhaust valves need to be within 0.25 millimeters and 0.3 millimeters. To see if the valves are within spec, you can use the low end of the clearance range to make sure that the feeler gauge fits. If it doesn't fit, your clearances are too small. Then you can proceed to use the upper limit of the range to ensure that the feeler gauge does not fit. If it does fit, your clearances are too large. You can try different combinations of feeler gauges in order to get the most precise measurement. Repeat this process for both sides of your motorcycle. After I measured all my clearances, I found that two were out of spec and they were both on the intake side. So the next part of the process was to figure out what size my current shims were, so I had to remove the intake camshaft. Before you remove the camshaft, you'll need a special tool to lock the gear in place with its anti-backlash gear. Triumph sells a tool, but is unnecessarily expensive and you can make your own pretty easily. The holes in the gears are stepped from 6mm to 4mm, so you can take an M6 bolt and use a rotary tool to grind down the end of it to 4mm. I also have a more detailed video on my channel on how to create this tool. You can insert the tool into the two gears to ensure the anti-backlash gear will not lose tension when you remove the camshaft. I do suggest creating a cardboard box with dividers to place each part as you cannot mix up any of the bolts or holders. To access the camshaft, you will first need to remove the oil feed pipe that lies on top of the camshaft. Then you will want to loosen the bolts of the camshaft holders in a pattern that will allow the pressure on the camshaft to be released evenly. I've numbered my holders I1, I2, and I3 moving left to right across my bike. Start by breaking the bolts on I1, then I3, then I2 and proceed by loosening I1 slightly, then I3 slightly, and then I2 slightly, and repeat this process until the bolts are fully removable. You can remove each holder with its bolts and store them in your labeled box or storage area. The next step is to remove the buckets from their places and remove the shim from the bucket. Use a micrometer to measure the old shim. In order to calculate the size of the new shim that you need to purchase, I put together a Google Sheet that is linked in the description that you can make a copy of and use the formulas. Once you have the sheet open, you can enter in the current clearances of your valves and shims, and then enter in the old shim size in order for the formula to tell you the size of the shim that you need to purchase. Any 25 millimeter shim will work, but I purchased mine from Mike's Excess, I'm not affiliated with the website, but they are well priced and it shipped very fast, even though I ordered it during the height of the coronavirus pandemic. While we're on the topic of parts, you also need to replace the four cam cover washers, as well as the copper crush washers for the oil feed pipe. 
and the O-ring for the oil feed pipe as well. To replace the shims, use some motor oil to ensure everything is lubricated before installation. Place the shim in the bucket and then drop the bucket into its place. Once the buckets are installed, you can place the camshaft back into its place, ensuring the pin is straight to line up the gears. Also make sure that the dots line up on the camshaft gear and the primary gear. Before installing the camshaft holders, be sure to lubricate everything with motor oil as well. You will want to install the holders in a similar pattern compared to how you remove them. You can lightly install each holder and finger tighten the bolts. Then you can slowly tighten them alternating between I1, I3, and I2 every few turns until they're seated. Once seated, you can tighten using a torque wrench to 10 newton meters. Also, don't forget to remove the pin from your camshaft. As mentioned earlier, it is recommended to replace the copper crush washers and O-ring on the oil feed pipe. And then as you install it, be careful not to drop the banjo bolts or crush washers into the engine. The bolts can be tightened to eight newton meters. Once everything is torqued to spec, turn the rear wheel a few times to seat the shims into the bucket and remeasure your clearances to make sure everything is now in spec. To reassemble the engine, you can replace the valve cover and use the new cam bolt washers. Be sure to return the bolts to the same location that they came from and tighten them down to 14 newton meters. The spark plugs can be returned and reinstalled at 20 newton meters, which is about one half of a turn once they're seated. The two brackets can be reattached to the frame and the metal housing can be attached as well, with the emissions tubing clipped back on. The tank can be reinstalled by connecting the hose and the fuel pump and the electrical connector and fastened with an 8mm socket. Once everything is installed, fire the bike up and ensure the check engine light is not on. Thanks for watching. Let me know in the comments if I didn't explain anything enough.